I have a message for the people of Lebanon. Israel's war is not with you. It's with Hezbollah. For too long, Hezbollah has been using you as human shields. It placed rockets in your living rooms and missiles in your garage. Those rockets and missiles are aimed directly at our cities, directly at our citizens. To defend our people against Hezbollah strikes, we must take out those weapons. Now, starting this morning, the IDF has warned you to get out of harm's way. I urge you, take this warning seriously. Don't let Hezbollah endanger your lives and the lives of your loved ones. Don't let Hezbollah endanger Lebanon. Please, get out of harm's way now. Once our operation is finished, you can come back safely to your homes. You just heard Israeli war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu accuse Hezbollah of using Lebanese civilians as human shields while encouraging people to evacuate ahead of his bombing campaign. Now, even though he was seemingly addressing the people of Lebanon, that video was not for the people of Lebanon. It was for us Americans, which is why he was speaking English. And yes, millions of people in Lebanon do speak English, but more speak Arabic. But that message right there, rest assured, was for us Americans. And they're letting us know that poor little Israel has no choice but to expand the war in the region yet again. And he's doing this to drum up support among our government. So that was a propaganda video. But what's funny is that the propaganda is totally unnecessary at this point because the Biden administration has made it crystal clear that they're going to do whatever Netanyahu wants. Wants. As AP reports, the U.S. is sending more troops to the Middle East. There's currently about 40,000, according to Ken Klippenstein, and they're also encouraging citizens in Lebanon from America to leave while they still can. And as all of this happens, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is reportedly pushing for a ceasefire and de-escalation. But at this point, it's hilarious for the Biden administration to even bother to pretend that they're trying because they're not going to stop doing the bombing if you're giving them the bombs to do said bombings. It's basic common sense. But the Biden administration is saying that to save face because they want at least some plausible deniability in the event a wider regional war ensues, which is now very likely. But it's kind of too late for that, right? Israel already invaded the West Bank. In fact, they just raided Al Jazeera's offices there and shut them down, which is real democratic. And now they're committing war crimes in Lebanon. They've bombed 300 different sites in Lebanon, resulting in more than a thousand people that have been wounded. And out of the 274 people killed, at least 21 are children, 39 are women and two are medics. But I guess that this is uh, perfectly acceptable since they invoked the human shield card. When you say that they're using human shields, then that gives you a blank check to do whatever the fuck you want. Apparently, they think it gives them permission to kill as many civilians as they want. And it kind of does because the United States is still aiding and abetting them. Now, Arab American Abbas Allah shared news from his family in Lebanon saying in our village reports of a mom and her daughters killed in their home by an Israeli airstrike in my cousins their great aunt and three daughters the same and we're only getting early reports and some first-hand accounts but after seeing the IDF's barbaric genocide in Gaza for nearly a year it's not unreasonable to assume things are probably going to get a lot worse for the people in Lebanon if this continues and there's already videos emerging online of Israel bombing residential areas but, you know, Israel's bombing campaign in Lebanon isn't surprising, considering the fact that just last week they launched a shocking terror attack in Lebanon that killed two kids and four medics, not to mention resulted in 2,800 plus injuries. And if you think that me calling that a terror attack is too far, I'm using the words of former CIA director Leon Panetta, who said that this is terrorism full stop. And you know it's bad if Leon fucking Panetta thinks that it's terrorism. But Israel does this because they know that the United States will have their back no matter what and we don't just support them materially by supplying them with bombs obviously our politicians are literally cheering them on as they commit war crimes case in point and i want to be very clear I, I thought what israel chose to do about blowing up the pagers and then walkie talkies and then after targeting and eliminating membership and leadership of hezbollah I absolutely support that and in fact if anything i love it tell me you're a sociopath without telling me you're a sociopath John Fetterman will go first. Astonishing. But I mean, that's the kind of rhetoric coming from politicians in the world's greatest superpower. So it's no wonder why Israel feels so emboldened to commit acts of terrorism in other countries. Because why wouldn't they if they can get away with it, right? If our government has supported them all throughout their unthinkable genocide in Gaza, there's no reason why we'd stop supporting them if they do the same in Lebanon. And we're already seeing the same conduct in Lebanon from the IDF that we've seen in Gaza.
I say this is the beginning of the war, definitely the beginning of a war. This comes after Israel killed at least 45 people Friday in a massive airstrike on a densely populated residential neighborhood of Beirut. The dead include 16 members of Hezbollah, including two senior commanders, Ibrahim Akil and Ahmed Wahbi. Lebanon's transportation minister, Ali Hamia, condemned the Israeli attacks. The Israeli enemy, with all its continued crimes, with the excuse of pursuing Hezbollah, has targeted a residential compound. It has committed a massacre to a residential building against unarmed children, women at their homes. The Israeli enemy is taking the region to war. Hezbollah responded by firing a barrage of rockets into Israel, targeting an air base and weapons factories. And see, that right there is really important because how you conduct warfare matters. How Israel defends itself, as Kamala Harris puts it, matters. Hezbollah attacks military targets, whereas Israel attacks residential buildings. Now, I get that the excuse is that Hezbollah members were in there, so they had no choice but to bomb the entire building. But that is complete and utter horseshit. That is war crime apologia. If a bank robber took a dozen people hostage, you wouldn't kill the hostages to get the bank robber, would you? I'd hope not. If a murderer was on the loose and he was hiding in somebody's backyard, you wouldn't bomb the entire block to get the one murderer, right? Israel's military basically does this. They will bomb a residential building, but say, well, we had to because there was a terrorist in there. Yes, there were innocent civilians in there who had nothing to do with Hezbollah or Hamas, but, you know, human shields, human shields, yada, yada, yada. It works, so we're just going to say the same shit. It's ridiculous. And what's incredibly frustrating is that Israel's military is capable of precision. We know this because when they assassinated Hamas's political leader, Ismail Hania, they did so when he was in Iran by covertly smuggling in a bomb to his hotel room ahead of time. Now, it did a lot of damage, obviously, but they didn't level the entire building. So they can be precise if they need to, but they're choosing to not be precise in Gaza. And now they're choosing to not be precise in Lebanon, at least with what we're seeing so far, because they want to prove a point. And they're using the same playbook in Lebanon that they used in Gaza, which is horrifying. And I say this because Israel's diaspora affairs minister is even raising the specter of occupation in southern Lebanon. So we have a rogue regime flagrantly violating international law. Things are spiraling out of control, and it doesn't bode well for anyone in the region. Because as Dr. Warren Blumenfield put it in an op-ed for LGBTQ Nation, Israel isn't going to be able to eliminate Hezbollah. They can't even eliminate Hamas, and Hezbollah is way stronger than Hamas. So how do they expect to eliminate Hezbollah if they can't even decimate Hamas. Furthermore, the way to get Hezbollah to back down is to stop doing the genocide in Gaza. That's what provoked Hezbollah in the first place, and things have only gotten worse as Netanyahu has outright sabotaged peace talks. And not to mention, a war with Hezbollah risks drawing in Iran, which would be catastrophic, not just for the people in Iran, but also in Lebanon and Israel too. So it's a dangerous game of chicken that needs to end, and it would end if the Biden administration finally used their leverage and said enough is enough. But since Biden refuses to cut off Netanyahu, Yahoo, things continue to get worse and worse, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. And it's really interesting that Netanyahu is doing this just ahead of the election. Why? Because he wants Trump to win. Biden is too stupid to understand that Netanyahu is a partisan actor at this point for all intents and purposes, and everything he's doing is trying to help Trump. Right. So Trump can say, look, Israel's at war with multiple countries now, and Biden isn't doing enough. I would help him. Biden can stop this by cutting off the weapons, but he's not doing this. He's not doing it. Now, I want to play a clip from a Lebanese journalist who describes the carnage taking place across the country. And what's he's, what she says here is genuinely horrifying. This morning, between 6 and 7 a.m., as most people were still sleeping, Israel began its largest bombardment campaign uh, of the year. Uh, uh, in South Lebanon, and then gradually it made its way to the Bekaa, reaching all the way north of the Bekaa to the Hermid. That's about 200 kilometers far from the border. Um, these are locations that were not targeted up until this point in the war. Uh, and in fact, this is very reminiscent of 2006. Uh, we're talking about 100 locations or so, 50 or 100 locations or so between villages, towns, and, and various parts of the landscape. 
uh, Jbe district, uh, which is which is uh, you know not really involved at all uh, in this war, was also targeted. Lalu, this is also part of uh, uh, the psychological warfare that we are seeing, and the bombing itself. Uh, you know, we saw plumes that uh, were not necessarily the most familiar. So we're talking about bombs that may have been uh, added to the arsenal for the first time here in Lebanon, or at least used in Lebanon for the first time. Uh, the scale is, is, is incomparable so far. Later in the afternoon, at around uh, noon, we had maybe another 100 or 200 strikes in different locations. As you did mention, uh, it seems like there's 100 people who were killed already. Uh, and several hundred more definitely wounded and injured. Uh, sites near hospitals were targeted in a clear indication that what has happened in Gaza may be coming uh, to Lebanon as well. And that is a really terrifying thought, but it's not surprising. They're using the same justification in Lebanon that they used in Gaza, that they've been using in Gaza, to be clear, because the genocide is still going on. In Gaza, they've bombed refugee camps, hospitals, schools, mosques, churches, all under the pretense of going after Hamas. And they made it very clear that they're using the same pretense to indiscriminately bomb Lebanon as well. Except, you know, swap out Hamas with Hezbollah and it's the same fucking thing. So things are spiraling out of control and we are on the cusp of a full-blown regional war in the Middle East unless Biden grows a spine and cuts off Netanyahu. But since it's been pretty clear by now that he's not going to do that and has no plans to do that, expect things to get a lot worse.